Good evening, everybody, and welcome along to One Heart Racing Season 23, round number four here in the, the P1 tier. As we head to the auto driver, Jose Carlos Pache, in all of Carlos Pache, of course, a Brazilian driver who won at this track back in 1975. Here's the Sao Paulo Grand Prix in Brazil. My name is Jess Ball, one of your commentators, and joining me once again is Steve. And we've just seen someone that you can't see on screen, but you saw someone has just binned it um in towards turn number four in the middle of turn number five so that's this qualifying done but steve we had a great race last week we saw nicola soro take the win and because of that he's now your championship leader yeah it was brilliant race uh, last time out by nicola soro just absolutely dominated throughout the whole race so very well done to him last time out but yeah it's brazil it's gonna be a fun one this track always produces great races on no matter what game you're on so we're surely going to be in for a very very exciting grand prix today yep we are unfortunately we caught uh, people at the moment when they were just about to finish their laps but that is absolutely fine that gives us plenty of time to go through our standings in just a moment but let's go out on track as brendan has just finished his lap i think we've got people just about to start a lap here comes casper as he heads towards jung sound now it has 36 laps awaiting our drivers, 4.309 kilometers long race distance at 152.939 kilometers and lap record set by Valtteri Bottas. So the race lap record of 110.540. Two DRS detection zones, um, one heading towards 12 at the start, finish straight, and then one heading towards turn three and four. Casper finishes it in P5. So we'll go on board with Carmentalist as he's about to start his run, but... I think Brazil, a lot of people love this track. There's a lot of overtaking opportunities. We've seen a lot of people ha have championship deciders here that goes down to the wire. It's just such a great track. Yeah, this track, it, it just is rich with history as well. It's just such an amazing track to drive. It's easy to follow around that middle sector. It goes from a very, very simple first and final sector to a very, very technical middle sector. So downforce varies around this track. You usually want a bit more lower downforce. You want to sort of take the hit in the middle sector because there's no real overtaking opportunities through there. So you sort of just take the hit through the middle sector, set up the car for the straights. And this track, it's just so good to have a battle round you can hold it for at least half a lap and expect the drivers to just be holding back really mainly through the middle sector then once we get to the final and first sectors that's when we get an amazing battle between uh, i would say a majority of the field Riding on board with colin mason who was called into the driver's press conference this week and in his own words he was asked how do does he feel about things going this season and how is having Nip back helping him and our, our AZ Abbey to have the boy back and he feels like it's so good to have Nip back because they work so well as a team and encourage and help each other he thinks the season is going good but he's been a bit unlucky in some of his qualifying and races has been poor but we picked up consistent points well they're doing well in the constructors championship but still a long way to go yet as he heads towards the final set to Colin coasting in P8 in at the championship Nicolas Oro Kylie sitting on 63 points to Timo's 44 points. Forza Brendan on 43 points. And then Matt in fourth on 40 points. And, and see unarmed. That's how I meant to say it. It's not Canard, it's see unarmed on 33 points. And then it's Nick, J. Cole, Colin Mason, Casper, and then Basality rounds up your top 10 as Colin sorts him up into P5. And I have to say also, the challenge is even though it's such an easy track, Ferro Dura. Drivers will have to balance the speed and grip through there and avoid running wide or hitting the grass on an exit. Then Vico de Pato, hard braking and late turning also requires uh, to get a sharp apex through there as well. The stability and traction, I think, is even more key um, throughout here as well. Some great memorable moments coming up here as well. First used in Formula 1 back in 1973 and uh, there was a Brazilian driver that won the track in 1975. It's been set aside for building houses on back of this track, so it's not a, really a permanent track. It used to be 7.960 kilometres long, had 26 turns, believe it or not. It was a very long track, but it, it, as time goes on, the track has been shortened to what we know today. And renovations costing $15 million to make. Lukey, purple in the middle sector, but that's out of the ones 
around him. He's he's got to admit that some some bits is not gone his own way. He loves his trap, but he doesn't have that much time to practice. But he's hoping for a dry race and to secure himself in the top ten as Luki comes himself into P4. So he's doing better than what he expected as well. But uh, let's watch uh, see Anand as he heads towards turn number five now. Let's see what he can do. He's a very consistent driver, um, Callum, at the moment this season. And it's nice to have him back in the league. And he likes his track. He's one of his favourites to race on. Yeah, he's been very, very consistent so far this season. He's always up in the top five, around about there. He's very rare to see him out of it. But heading now through turn 11 and into Yun Sao, this is a very difficult corner to spot the breaking point for. Also, you can't have too much apex curb because then it will just understeer you wide and that will get you onto the grass so he's getting a nice uh slipstream here from his teammate posh evans as they now head down in to the start finish line what would it be for sin armed it is a one minute eight point two zero nine a decent lap time there puts him just behind max by about a tenth of a second and he's got that tenth of a gap to lukey so he's in a in a solid p4 there I think you're on mute, Jess. Oh, thank you very much. I, I, I had that habit a lot of times this week, and I do apologise. Um, I always keep forgetting to unmute myself when um, I'm looking at stuff. But anyway, J. Cole is finishing his lap, and bearing in mind, even though this track is easy, qualifying could be one of the closer of the season as J. Cole goes up to the line. 108.711. I know he can find a bit more time than that as the top few separated by a few tenths of a second. That is it now for the first half of qualifying, and it is Forbes of Brendan. The car sits himself in P1 currently with a 107.953, and it's car Mentalist. Great qualifying from him. He got the drive of the day vote last week uh, with a 108.209. Matt's in there with a 108.110, and then Canal obviously 108.209. So good to see the times up there. Larkin is back this week as well after a few weeks off. So. Nice to have him back as well. Only 15 drivers, though, which uh, is a bit of a shame, but bearing in mind it is bank holiday in the UK tomorrow, which means most people, including me, get tomorrow off, which I'm really happy about because it's been a very stressful week. But let's have a look at our championship leader, Steve. He's been very confident coming into this. He's wanting to keep that positive streak going, but he's not really a fan of this track. It's not the best. It's not the worst for tra track. It's kind of a mid-track. So if he performs well here... Just see what he's like when it come when he comes to his best tracks. Yeah, I mean he's had good pace over the past two weeks at MLR in Hungary, so he is you would think on for a good result here today if he carries on that form coming to the line now. What is it for Nicolas Oro? He's three tenths quicker than Brendan. And that was his first lap time. That's his banker lap. So he's obviously going to build on that. And then Timo goes into second place now with a 1 minute 7.804. So Nicolo, Soro and Timo both get set in very, very good lap times there. Six minutes still left in the session for them to improve on it. But Nicolo, Soro, his form at the moment is continuing. And it, it, it just seems unstoppable out there at the minute. I think a lot of people seem to be unstoppable in many of the tiers so far, and Nicolas Oro being one of them, as Matt's now about to finish his run, and we'll see if he can beat his teammate. He's looking very tidy through that final set to DRS Open. Bearing in mind on this game, you use a lot of DRS as you head up to the line, and it's a 107.89 tick, puts him into third, and his teammate just about edging him there right now. Casper, who... Usually goes on three laps on at those soft tyres, it is to be expected at the moment. He's going to go into the pit, surely, because he has run out of fuel currently, um, as um, he is currently 40 for the moment. Fatality crashed out in the middle sector, and we saw Ka um, uh, Boom crash um, into the exit of turn number four and five. So that's people's second laps done, unless you're Brendan. Where is Brendan right now? He's lost a bit of time in, in, the, in the middle sector, but all he's got to do is get in the final sector. You can see he's balancing his ERS quite a lot here. And nope, he's going in into the pit. My bad. So uh, he's going to probably go out for one final run very soon. So it is our two championship protagonists pretty much in the, the top firing line currently at the moment. And they were called in the rivalries this weekend. Plenty of racing respect going on from them. And they were asked, would there be the odd bump on the road? to respective championship targets. And Timo said, 
I'm not specifically keeping an eye out on where he is, but since I'm racing him directly most of the time, I do obviously keep an eye on him. And Nicolo said, as Timo said, we raced so close in every race so far that he's inevitable looking at his results. Hope to have more battles with him and fights for wins. So at the moment, Steve, is their rivalries seems to be pretty good. But when it comes to the end of the season, let's hope it doesn't change because it's in good rivalries out there on track. Yeah, I mean, they're both two very quick drivers. I expect them to keep that same racing respect out on the track. They'll give each other plenty of room when it when it comes to that time. They're side by side on the track, maybe even battling for the lead on the final lap. So uh, there, there's a lot of racing respect between the pair. They both know that they're both top of the game at the moment. They're both quickest in this tier so far. Um, so... They just need to keep up that form, and if they do so, we could have an amazing fight all the way to the end of the season. And yeah, it'll be certainly a good one to watch as this season unfolds. Yes, indeed. And it's a car before the storm. And whilst we wait for people to set their laps, it's a good chance for us to go through our sponsors, Next Level Racing, our sponsor in the league, by providing some pride, including an ERS1 seat and cockpit to the possible champion of this tier and many other tiers as well this season. That's a shout out to also Pure Sim Gear, the driver with the most fast laps and poles combined will win a pair of sim racing gloves or socks. Mystery Sim Box, sponsor the league by providing a mystery shirt box to the winner of 100 Racing Driver Rankings. Our partners, Vespertine, who partner the league by providing merch. Azatec, who sponsor the league by providing a, win of, a winner of set of Invita Sim Racing boots to uh, the one who had the shortest combined qualifying time this season. ERT, uh, one of our partners who partner the league and sponsor our trophies and also part of the Going Gets Tough award. They have to attend all races, finish outside top three and complete all pre and post race interviews. And SimGrid, our partners at SimGrid that provide our races and community and platform. So thank you very much to all our sponsors and partners. We couldn't have done it without you. That's out of the way. Let's get these laps in from all the drivers. I know Nicola Soro has just started his as he heads towards the middle sector. Carmentis is about to finish off his as he's one of the first drivers to set a lap. So he's going to be out of sync for everybody, but that's fine for him. He's got some clear air and it is a banker lap for him. What about Nicola Soro's middle sector? He's gained a, a bit of time in, in that first sector. What about the middle sector for him as he heads towards Jung Sao? No, but I think he's backed off of that lap. So uh, he gets to go again. So uh, that's perfect time to see what these drivers are made of for the final part of qualifying. Yeah, and it means uh, uh, Nicolas Soro and Carmentis have, have made a little bit of an indent on their tyres. So they took a bit out, a bit of the energy out of the tyre. But Carmentis, as he's starting his final lap of the session, heading into uh, turn four, uh, fifteen thousandths down in the first sector. So not improving as it stands, but this middle sector is really where you find your time on your lap. Now heading through turn six, now a double apex corner, then into seven be nicely done through here then eight heading through the long left hander which then leads you all the way up to the top of the hill which is a very very hard braking zone managing to not lock up the right front and then carry on that momentum down the hill once again as you head into john sal what is it in the middle sector he's found a bit of time up by 16,000, so he's found uh, about 30,000 on the lap but now heading through the final corners of course easy flat don't really think about them you just want to maximize your run to the line by keeping as close to the inside as possible what is it for car mentalist it's up into p4 he passes brendan it's a one minute seven point nine four six nicola soro he's up by uh, a tenth from thirty five thousandths here so he could be on for a very good lap time in the has coming to the line now does he have enough fuel to make it that is the question oh he's starting to stutter on the fuel and he actually drops a little bit of time he's half a tenth down on the lap and that is he's qualifying over for Nicolo Soro. And the checker flag is dropping in about 30 seconds. And Brendan's not going to be improving either. Brendan's not going to be improving either. So he is done for qualifying. Luke is also done for qualifying. He has invalidated his lap time. Delta Hunter is just about to start his lap time. Larkin going towards the first sector. Casper hanging towards the middle sector. He's off spare time there. And he's running out of fuel, so I think that's over for him. J. Cole's next across the line. What could he do from 13th? Moves himself up to 9th, and he should have time to get one more lap in, but he's found out of Urz, so it's going to be, I think, even more trickier than expected. 
Carmen says, I don't think he's going to get another run in. So that is him done. So obviously, I said Lukey isn't going to get another run in. And what about Timo, who's currently sitting in P2? Pretty much realistically, he's the only one who could possibly beat Nicolas Soro. But you never know with Posh Evans and Seat Unarmed. They could beat them. You never know. Well, Matt is going into the pits. Timo is going in into the pit lane. Colin could only manage sixth place. What about Posh Evans, who's had an injury for a while, attended last week, but he felt like that he could have performed a little bit better as he heads towards the final set. Where we've got a few people crossing the line to see if they can beat Nicolas Soro. Larkin only manages P7. We've got uh, Callum, C unarmed, who's right behind his teammate. Could get a bit of a toe here. So we'll see if Posh Evans may slow down. No, he's not. He's going into the pit lane. See, unarmed, however, doesn't it improve either. J. Cole, does he improve? The answer to that is... Nope, he does not. He only manages P11. So no one was able to improve on their final run, which is quite common around Brazil. And that is Nicolas Soro, our championship leader on pole. Yeah, it seems that Nicolo Soro and Timo got their lap times at the perfect time for track conditions. It just seemed that at the end there, no one was really able to hook up the lap. Maybe the track got a bit cooler or they just uh, just weren't heating up the tyres correctly and it just didn't work out in the end. So a nice pole again for Nicolo Soro. A very, very good lap time from him. Two temps clear of Timo. A main factor in this race... Probably not going to be tyre wear or fuel. It's going to be uh, all down to ERS management heading down the main street and into turn four. That'll, those will be the main places uh, that you need to look out for the ERS and make sure you have enough to defend from the car behind. But other than that, it's pretty much plain sailing for the drivers. You don't have to worry about too much. So um, it's just going to be a, an ERS management game. Yes, let's look through your results then as Nicolas Soro qualifies on pole by one tenth of a second over Timo in second, Matt's in third, Carmenta this fourth, Brendan in fifth, Colin Mason in sixth, Larkin in seventh, Posh Evans in eighth, and Cam's going to kill me because I didn't scroll down. Um, yes, so uh, apologies about that, but I will uh, get a screenshot um, for the time being. We only had, well, I think I only missed one driver and I don't think he set a lap anyway. I don't think so. We're all good. Um, I think it was booming. It, it, it was it. booming 15th, and I don't think he set a lap. So um, I'm probably going to be, I think, a lucky human being. But if not, I'm going to make sure I scroll. It was because people read it up too much as well. They didn't give a chance for us to scroll. Uh, boom, didn't set a lap. So, phew, panic over, panic over. So. We're about to get in and to the race. We did mention about the sponsors. Let's see what other drivers have thought about um, this season as a whole and about Inter Lagos. Timo has been a bit tired recently, but with his great qualifying nearly matching Nicolas Soro, that is still pretty decent despite the fact that he had to get up early because of Zambot. And it's not a track he hates to drive on and he hopes for another podium finish to keep his consistency, but it would be nicer and sweeter if he finishes ahead of Nicola Soro. And at the moment, currently, it is dry. And people were, were, were asked, well, do they prefer wet or dry? But Timo would want it to be, doesn't mind. It'll be a nice way to get used to the wet on this new wheel. And Casper is wanting the rain, but unfortunately we're not gonna get rain as of yet. But knowing this game, it could throw rain at the last second, so. There we go. I got through all the interviews very quickly this week. So uh, there we go. Um, that, 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 that is it. And uh, J. Cole saying they, he wanted wet weather. Delta Hunter, if it's wet, is even slower. So kind of a mixed bag at the moment. Delta Hunter's probably glad that it's, it's dry. <laughs> Yeah, you, you would assume that, but um, I have to agree with J. Cole in the, I think it was Lukey as well, uh, I, I prefer the wet weather personally as a driver, um, it, it's just more about the driver in those types of conditions, but we're about to go on the way for the formation lap, a lot of drivers starting on the softs, a few on the mediums as well, so it's another diverse strategy race, so it's going to be whatever strategy works the best now, it's going to be all about what do you do, when do you do it, and uh, those medium tyres will have an advantage around about lap six or seven, you would think. And then, of course, they will come in and maybe even do a soft, soft. But it's all down to driver preference. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what happens when it comes to the two stops.
Yeah, 36 laps away are drivers. Two DRS zones, 4.30 and 9 kilometers long. We've got the top four on the soft ground band of tyres. Carmen is having a great qualifying. So is Max as well. Alpha Tower looking good for the constructors. And then we've got Brendan on the mediums. Colin on the mediums. Larkin on the softs. Larkin doing pretty decent in seven, being his teammate at the moment. Posh Evans in eighth. Surely he wanted to be doing a lot quicker. Maybe Qatar was a one off for him, despite him running out of fuel. C Unarmed is in ninth place on the mediums. Delta Hunter is on the softs. J Carl's on the softs. Lukey's on the mediums. Casper's on the softs. Fatality on the mediums. And Boom Pie on the mediums. So quite a mixed bag. Luckily, no one is starting on the hards. I made that mistake in my race where the game put me on hards, even though it wanted me to put on the sauce, but it worked way well in my favour as well. But we are about to get underway as the drivers make their way onto the grid. Any predictions on who you think's going to win this race? Um, I'm going to go for... It's a, tr it's a tricky one, but I'm, I'm going to go for Nicolas Soro. It, it may look it'd be the obvious answer, you would think, but um, yeah, I reckon he's got it in him. I have to say, Nicola Soro, one of the favourites, but you never know. Timo may be on one of a strategy of a kind and may take the win as well. So I'm going to go for the opposite and I'm going to go for Timo. So let us know your thoughts in the chat on who you think is going to win at this race. A few disqualifications, but we are about to get underway for the five red lights here in Interlagos for the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. And we are underway at one half racing P1 tier. Timo gets a really good start. So does Nicolo. Matt's not so much as they all make their way towards turn one for the first time then. As it's quite close between the Alpha Tauri and the Red Bull, the sister team currently. Delta Hunter's had a good start as well. A few people lose positions already. It's Larkin that's lost it in turn number one. So it's Fatality. So I wonder if they made contact somewhere at the moment so uh, they had lost a few places but so far the top two remain as they are jaco having a monstrous start who was i think is down in fourth even now up into eighth spot so he's loving life in that alpine car oh we got c unarmed and boom trying to go up the inside in towards turn seven and eight Boom, don't forget, started last, and he's already up to temp, so his, his mediums are loving life in Interlagos, but top four, not budging, but they're battling either way. Yeah, brilliant start from uh, Timo and Nicolo Sora. They really did get a perfect start, you would think. I mean, Mats and Carmenta just went side by side into turn three, managed to not make contact, and Mats managed to hang on, but... Uh, J. Cole, a brilliant start, and I'll say that, Matt uh, was about to hang on. Come into this, gets by down the straight, I think he used a bit of his battery to get by the Alpha Tari. J. Cole and Delta Hunter heading into turn one now, side by side between the Aston Martin and Alpine. The Alpine going for the up and under, is he going to be able to get it done? No, he's not. He's going to have to sit behind through turn three. Now it's about the run down into turn four. Is J. Cole going to get close enough? He's looking to the inside now. Down the inside the Alpine goes. There's a little bit of tyre contact. A little slide there for J. Cole as well. He gets in front of the Aston Martin of Delta Hunter though. And now here comes Lukey to the outside of the Aston. Oh, he's on the grass. He's had a huge slide through turn six. That's an old boom pie to get down his inside. Is he going to be able to make the move? To the outside now goes the house. It'll be inside to outside. And if he's able to get a good run up the hill, it'll be to the inside again for the next right. Had all oh, big slide of the rear there. I think he locked the rear tyres heading in to turn 11. But that is Lukey's position. He manages to defend heading into Jun Sao. 17 races here have been run from pole position, including seven of the last nine in real life. Nicolas Soro looking to try and get that tradition going and going even more. And 2,530 Grand Prix racing laps have been completed at the Interlars Golf Circuit in real life. And we're going to be adding 36 more of them here tonight. DRS enabled for these drivers. So if they were in one second of each other, this is where they are going to pounce to the limit here in P1 tier. This is the top tier of one hard racing. And we know that these, these drivers can fight, fight, fight. And this is what Callum is doing at the moment to the inside in towards turn five and six. And he's up in the 211 place. Top 12 at one hard racing. Get points. 
First place gets 20 points and 12th place gets one point. And there's also a point for Vasa's lap inside the top 10 and outside the top 10 as well. M Manji two stop as well, so they have to make two stops regardless of these conditions. And if they don't do that, of course, they will get disqualified. We have no disqualifications yet. And Brenda, by the way, Steve, is looking very close on the back of Matt's. Yeah, Matt's made a mistake heading into Junsao, and that's allowed Brendan to get all over the back of the Alpha Tauris to the inside now, heading down into turn one. Is he going to be able to get the move done? You would think so, being so far alongside. He's ahead now in the Williams. Those medium tyres need to be working at this moment in time to use the advantage that they have now over the soft tyre runners. In the DRS, of car meant to this as well, so the top... Five were able to stick together. Even Colin as well was able to stick. J. Cole and Delta Hunter into turn four. Once again battling for track position there. Delta Hunter runs wide. This could allow Boompire to try and go around the outside. But he saw what happened to Lukey last time around. And he just elects to sit behind the Aston Martin. So, yeah, those medium tires on Brendan. Seeming to be quite good on pace. He's seeming to be able to keep up with Carmen to this Timo and Nicolo Sora in front. And uh, you would expect in the next few laps him to pre ever, ever closer to the top three. Yeah, I think with the squabbling for these drivers, the train could, I think, get even longer and longer. We know DRS trains here could affect their ER's rest usage, and some people will be saving it. As I found out in my race, you, you pretty much lose a lot of VRS very, very quickly, so you don't want to be losing too much. And our race leader and championship leader is coming in to the pit lane early than expected actually so he's gonna get his first stop out of the way he thinks that the optimum pace will be lost round about now so he's going on to the medium tire so i think a two mediums will be the case for him at the early undercut as we've seen in other tiers works out wonders for some drivers but it's an, a bit earlier than we thought delta hunter trying to go down the, up the inside of bumpai but bumpai is doing very very well on those sets of memes. I wonder if the softs are starting to die a bit earlier than we thought, unless Delta Hunter could try the counter-attack on him as well. Casper is in this fight. See unarmed is. Lukey Larkin. Well, not Larkin, because he's lost a bit of time for it. But still plenty of chances for a lot of these drivers to get back in this. And if I was a top two at the moment, I've got to be thinking, right, when have I got a pit to uh, cover off Niccolo? Yeah, it's a very early pit stop there for Niccolo. I would have expected it around about lap 7, lap 8. But um, if I was Timo, I would maybe try cover it or just stay out an extra few laps just to see the pace difference. I mean, the later he comes in, the more pace he'll have in the stint. As Matt gets a five-second time penalty for speeding into the pit lane, he now comes into the pits to get rid of his softs. But... Timo, later on in the stint, he will have fresher tyres, so he will be able to gain a lot more. But here comes Carmen to this to the inside, heading down into turn four. You'd think he'll get the move done before the braking zone. He does, but Carmen to this has used a lot of his ER. So a huge slide out of turn four there. Big, big slide as Boompai goes down the inside of Jayco and gets the move done into turn four. So it seems that those soft tyres really are dropping off quite quickly and the medium tyre runners are now starting to come into their uh, fray. I can see why, because after five, six laps for me, I know I was losing, I think, a second, 1.5 seconds per lap. So really, you've got to be starting to think, right, what are my drivers around me doing? Are they on the same tyres? If they're not and you see a medium runner behind you, you better run and pretty much go for the undercut very quickly because otherwise the optimum pace will be losing very quickly. Look at how Brendan is catching up as well. That's going to be pretty key. I think if I was Timo, I would come in now. Timo is not coming now, but Timo is going to be threatening Carmentas once again as Timo to the inside of turn number one and he takes the lead from Carmentas. Great stuff from him as well. And I'm almost certain that Carmentas is going to be under pressure from Brendan the soon. Two rivals from leagues gone by and they're fighting here in this league. Brendan's going to get past Carl Mendelis. Is he going to get past Timo as well? To the inside through turn four. He almost made a double overtake work as Timo goes off the track. Brendan takes the lead. Carl Mendelis second, Timo in third. Timo's lost two places because of it, but these guys are going to keep squabbling and squabbling. And that's going to allow Nicolas Soro to be loving life and trying to catch up to these guys. Yellow flag, by the way. That is Luki. That has lost it in towards, I think it was turn seven and eight there. And he's going to find it difficult to cool down his tyres once again. But shame for Lukey because he's had an okay race so far. 
Colin still in fourth place, but bearing in mind we had two drivers that are pitting. He's on the back of his train now, and that's because all the squabbling is now happening. Yeah, it seems that a lot of this squabbling is really slowing down this top three. And Carmentis and Timo stay out once again on their soft compound tyres. Timo to the inside now of Carmentis as they head down into turn one. Is he going to get the move done on the brakes? Yes, he is. A really nice move there by Timo. He's got a lot of battery stored up compared to Carmentis, and he's using it to his advantage. Now he needs to try to get past Brendan to ma uh, to minimise the amount of time he loses to Nicolo Soro. But Nicolo Soro is going to be gaining fast on those medium tyres as uh, Timo sits behind Brendan through turn four. He's ahead of at least one car and a Probably his competitor at the moment in this race. Carmentalis both on the soft tyres at the moment. But these guys lengthening out their soft tyre stint. Could they be going either onto another set of softs in the next stint? Or could they be going onto a set of mediums, but then taking those mediums long enough to go onto a set of softs at the end? Oh, that is my question, I think, for some of these drivers. Will they be extending their softs so they could do soft, medium, soft? Some people will have saved some sauce for the end, but they would have used it at the opening stint. But for Brendan, he's got some soft saved at his back pocket, it looks like, as well. And he's going to overstretch it. Timo and Carmen's is going to overstretch it again. And Colin could use it to catch up. But here comes Carmen to this once again. This time he doesn't go to the inside. He stays tucked in behind Timo. And it looks like it's gonna, the battle's going to be going on and on. And the gap is allowing Brendan to stretch out that gap a little bit. Nicolas Soro gets past Luki with the gap coming down in the Hass's end. That's really going to help him solidify his lead. Same for Mats as well. But Mats obviously was a little bit further back for Nicolas Soro, but he wanted to get rid of this traffic, which was fair enough, of course. So quite a lot of people haven't done their first stops yet. And to be honest, I managed to stretch the sauce 10, 11 laps. So th these drivers can do it, but they do well quite quickly towards the end of their stint. So... These drivers got to drive conservatively, don't push it too much, because otherwise if you put it like quality pace for too long, that's where I think the tyres start to fade and we could have punch territory sooner rather than later. But Timo, the leading soft runner, surely he's going to come in soon because Colin is in that train and Boom could catch up before we know it as well. But Brendan doing well up front at the moment. Yeah, Brendan doing really well just to manage the gap between himself and Timo. Timo is starting to lose some rear grip. I saw it coming in uh, on the exit of John Sal. He just started to do lose the rear end slightly. Managed to save it, obviously, as J. Cole gets past Bumpire with a nice little DRS move into turn one. But yeah, Timo and Carmen to this obviously going to be starting to lose some rear grip now. Their tyres are going to be around maybe 60, 50, 60 percent uh, in that sort of region. So they are going to be losing time massively and it's all just going to be about keeping the car on the road and making sure you do, that you box before you get to that puncture territory because if you get a puncture, that is going to be race over for you and if it's a rear puncture, you have to just pray to God that you manage to get round in time because those things are deadly. So uh, Timo and Carmentalis, they just need to drive conservatively. The dirty air is not really helping them either behind Brendan, of course. These regulations mean there's a bit less than what there used to be, but there is still quite a bit of dirty air uh, to follow. And it's actually Brendan going very wide through John Sal, manages to keep the car in a straight line on the exit as well after losing the rear. But when do Timo and Carmentalis come in? That is the big question. You would think Carmen no. Carmentalis has come in, Carmentalis into the pit lane. This is going to be an undercut play on Timo. You would think it might work, and you would think now Timo will start pushing to get past Brendan and... Uh, Try get a, uh, try stay ahead of Carmentalist, but where does Nicolo Soro come out in the battle with Carmentalist? Let's keep an eye on him. But meanwhile, Timo defends to the inside and attacks, and he leads the race for now. And that is crucial for him for this race because we know that undercut is powerful, and he wants to prove us wrong to make sure that the overcut is powerful for staying out even longer. So, Nicolo Soro, look at that gap between himself and Carmentalist. It is absolutely huge and with them staying out that's allowing Matt to be in P2 at the moment and imagine where Timo is going to be as well Timo is going to be fighting for it surely maybe Matt will be thinking right what can can I do to help my Timo potentially as well but there's certain drivers that could be on newer tyres and may push very very quickly they are going to possibly hope 
for a safety car, maybe in about five, six laps, so they can go on to another set of memes till the end. And that would not help the ones who started on those memes as well. Timo stays out for one more lap. He's going to lose a chunk of time because there's certain drivers that have pitted very early. Casper was one of them. And they're going to drop to the back of because of it. J. Cole comes in, by the way. He's going in from his soft and going on to a set of the medium compound tyres. So it is just Timo from the soft runners who hasn't pitted yet. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd strategy from Timo. So actually, he's been passed by Brendan into into turn four. But what I've noticed over the past few races by Nicolas Soro is that he boxes early. He, he does like to get the undercut in on the first stint and then just maintain that gap through the second stint, which then helps him on the final one to then just make sure he has the gap so that no one can really undercut or overcut him. So it just makes it so that at the end of the race, he's a good three, four seconds clear come to the checkered flag. So Nicolo Soro, one thing I think these drivers need to notice is to cover off him by boxing roughly around the same lap you would think he would come in because he's boxed lap three in this race. It, it, he always boxes early. I've noticed that, especially last week as well, he yeah. boxed quite early for his tyres. So Timo's they need in. to start covering that up. As Timo comes in, he's going to be miles behind uh, Nicolo Soro, probably even behind Carmentalis at this rate. I mean, could be within the squabble of the likes of Fatality and Delta Hunter, and that could be detrimental to his race and being in that traffic that's fighting and yeah Luki now gets five seconds speeding in the pit lane where does uh Timo come out in relation to Delta Hunter and Fatality they're heading into turn one now I think he's just gonna come out ahead is he gonna come out ahead of Casper no I do not think so uh, no he actually <laughs> does come out ahead of Casper sorry <laughs> so he's dropped behind Carmentalist and that's gonna be massive for his race yeah, he was in second place, and now he's in drop to fourth place. So that is not good for his championship hopes, because he was going to hope that Nicolas Soro would lose more points rather than the game. But still a long race. He's on fresh tyres. Maybe he'll come back to help him towards the end of the stint, where the other driver's tyres will start to fade away a little bit. So Timo has still got some hope yet as well so what out for him as he closes tries to close up on Carmentalis Brendan is in we saw Colin Pitt a moment ago he's on the soft so he's doing the opposite he started on mediums and he's gone on to softs and I believe he's gonna go on to another set of the memes later so he can be faster later on we sit we saw him doing in some other races some races it paid off and for some races it does not but since it's a shorter track this could pay off I think a bit here with the longer lap speed as well. And he's going to try and fight with Delta Hunter. Heading towards turn number one. To the inside goes Colin. And he is through up in into ninth place on the road. And uh, where is Brenda going to come out in relation to Timo? I think Timo is going to come out just about ahead. But with Brenda with the fresher rubber, Timo has lost a lot of time. Same with Brendan as well. They could have been fighting for podiums, but now they're further down there at the moment. Colin getting a good pit stop. And with them... He's past Delta Hunter and he's going to try and get past his old esports teammate, a Casper too. Yeah, Colin, this soft strategy could work out for him in this stage of the race. I mean, he does, he will have the pace over Casper, of course, on those seven lap old mediums. They'll start to be feeling a bit of degradation to them at the moment. So uh, he just needs to be careful of that, does Casper. But Colin, those soft tyres, he needs to utilise them as much as possible on these opening few laps of the stint. Then he will have to start maintaining as uh, unarmed comes into the pit lane. Uh, that is going to be for is that going to be enough for a set of mediums or a set of softs? It looks like it is for a set of softs for unarmed. See, so, unarmed is probably going on two yeah. soft stints, maybe. I yeah. don't know. It is a soft. It is a soft tire. Brendan's the only one to do a medium, medium so far. So it, that's what it is. This is all about different strategies and how they then all connects at the end they all just some uh, sort of conjoin as Luki sets the fastest lap of the race down in 14th place but yep. yeah the, these drivers they need to be careful of what strategy they're doing they need to utilize whatever tire they're on as j cole and delta hunter through turn five delta hunter managed to get a beautiful run out of turn four and he's nearly dropped it he has dropped it through That's turn six the wall. He's just about avoided the wall. He managed to slide one way, overcorrected, and he has spun round through turn six, managed to uh, sort of 
minimise the amount of speed that he carried into the spin by losing it the first time. So uh, Delta Hunter, unfortunately with that battle with J. Cole, now down into 13th, was 10th. And uh, yeah, unfortunate there for Delta Hunter. Yep, he was doing pretty decent. He dropped from lower down the field earlier and he did gain it, but now he's back down again, which is a bit of a shame. He's just out of the points and we're seeing the last few drivers coming in to do their first pit stops. Boom Pie is one of them and he's on the soft tyre, so we'll see where he comes up in just a moment. So everyone is now boxed. It is Nicolas Sora that leads the way with Matt in a P2, but we can see some moves in at the background as uh, here comes Carl Mendelis to the inside of Matt in towards turn four, still side by side through five up the hill, heading towards turn number six. Not much space left from them, which means Carmenzis has to back out. And I'll be very worried about him because he is stuck in an Alpha Tauri sandwich currently, which is not where you want to be. But he's going to do his best to make sure he can do everything. There's four cars in the same train, all having a similar amount of pace as well. So they've got to think on their feet. They've got to think about other people's driving styles and think, what am I going to do that will help me in this race? And I think for most of these drivers, they're going to hope that any of them make a mistake. Brendan, I think, is going to be one of them who's got a really good back seat out of all of this. He's going to try and get past. Oh, no. Please make it not be four wide. He is trying going to be four wide, heading towards turn number one. It could be three wide, heading towards the braking zone, no. That's Timo trying to get past a few cars at once. He's not just past Brendan. He doesn't just pass Carmentalist. He passes both of them in into P2. And that was absolutely incredible from him, the driver that we thought got the uh, overcut brilliantly well not not brilliantly but brilliantly wrong he is doing fantastic but brendan gets past him once again up into b2 so that is some incredible battling all that squabbling by the way is helping nicolas soro out massively but this is just giving a great race this is what we're like we're seeing in real life isn't it like max was tapping up front and then everyone else fighting for the scraps yeah, it's just absolutely insane how close they all were and they all managed to keep it so, so clean. It just shows how much respect they all give to each other. I mean, Timo with a massive lunge. It was very opportunistic down the inside. Managed to make it work, but then it compromised himself heading down into turn four of obviously not having the DRS. But now, what can, can Timo uh, try to get back past Brendan? It's 5.5 seconds. Though. They've actually gained about half a second on Nicolo Soro in front, whose tyres will start to be hurting now. Timo to the inside, he gets past Brendan. Does Car uh, Carmenzis and Max have actually dropped back quite a way, especially Max. 1.6 behind Carmenzis, these tyres certainly are dropping. But look at the speed, look at the rate of knots that they're catching up to Nicolo Soro, Timo and Brendan. They are gaining massively, they've gained about a second in about a lap and a half, it's now 4.8. They really are starting to gain on the Haas in front of them, so the Haas obviously starting to have some tyre wear issues. Yes, and looking at my notes that I've written about this track, I did write about the fact that the optimum pace around here is probably around 14, 15 laps for these drivers. They've got it is a two-stop race, so the tyres are starting to fall off a little bit quickly for Nicolas Soro than we might think. So I did say, watch out for Timo, because even though he may be slower at the first half when he pitted for his set of the mediums, he will become faster once again. And look at that. He's definitely proving my point to a T, which is great for this racing league currently at the moment. It's great to see three cars in the space of a few corners trying to go for these moves. Carmenzis has backed off just a little bit currently at the moment. Max is falling off as well, which could help Colin Mason get back into this as well. And I think because of obviously the top four on older tie on newer tyres, that means that the trades are pretty much split a little bit. So Larkin, I believe, is going on to his second stop. I believe it maybe it'll be a set of hards or mediums. It'll be a set of the medium tyres for the Alpine driver. Not where he wants to be, but at least his two stop is done and dusted. He doesn't have to remember to do another one because that is sorted, but his tyres will go. A little bit questionable at the end, like we saw with Nicola Soro, maybe. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Another three-second time penalty for Luki, which is not ideal. But, uh, yeah, the question is, when will Nicolo start thinking about coming in? I, I would assume about lap 20, so he can do 16 laps on the mediums. But that's still a bit of a, uh, a push. Oh, he's actually disconnected. Oh, no! Um, 
I don't have him I as a friend, I don't think. Neither do I. Um. Oh, God. Uh, let, me have let, a let, look. let me just have a look. Uh, hopefully, I do. I don't. I, 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 I oh, pray no. to God I do have him. Hopefully. Uh, no, I don't. I don't Brendan's have him. As a... in the Who's... Sorry to go in. Brendan's in. He's gone for a set of hearts. Brendan's gone Brendan for a set of hearts. hearts. Was he meant to do that? So hopefully someone who's in the lobby, who's a little bit further back with the gap, can someone please invite Nicola Soro? That would be amazing, because I do not want to lose him lose a race win because of that. I can't even invite him. I think the lessons learned for me and add all the PC drivers ready for the next oh, world to win. Oh, what's happened there? Matt is out the race. <laughs> Virtual safety car. I'm surprised it wasn't a safety car. I caught the aftermath of that. I think Colin must have been involved, maybe Callum. Boom, maybe. Was there was like five cars that was in that fight. It was Colin going down the inside of uh, Matt, heading into turn six. I think Colin understeered. There was a little bit of contact made. That sent Colin's car into a spin. Of course, he has to correct that. It slid him straight back up into Matt. Matt's with nowhere to go, then gets collected and then sent flying into the outside wall. And that whole train of cars were just starting to get bottled up behind Matt's because of, of course, the uh, tyre difference. Because Matt's tyres were really, really starting to fall off here. But this, if it was a full safety car, it would help Nicolo Soro if, if, if he was able to get back in. Um, I have but... asked people to invite them when they go in the pits. So hopefully, hopefully fingers crossed, but I, I am going to add all of them at the end. DRS enabled. So it's only a VSC, and I think Timo is going to get past him. Oh, just That's such a shame. All that pace he has gained in his last few laps were for nothing. Absolutely got him. Yeah, it is gutting for Nicolo Soro there. It's, it's unfortunate what happens when, when it comes to league racing. These things do happen. It's out of everybody's control, and it's super, super unfortunate. He was losing time. I would have expected him to. He has been come sending into the pits another invite. Now. He has been sending okay. another invite from someone in the pit, and that was Lukey. Thank you very much for uh, a, a, anybody for uh, looking at my message. But a chance of Nicolo getting the win is going to be massive. We thought Timo lost his chance of getting the race victory, but now he's going to gain points to Nicolo Soro, and Nicolo's AI is going into the pits. So at least he's out the AI is remembered. Oh, one hand racing is doing a two stop. I need to go and do a two stop. Um, which, yeah. is, which is always a good thing. Well, mediums. I think that's what Nicolo would have done anyway. So, yeah, I would have thought. I would have thought that. So I think his AI oh. was very, very lucky. Hopefully he can get in very, very soon. As see unarmed could get past Boom by it, but he doesn't. And we're pretty much half race distance sorted as we head past the lake. And Timo still leads. Carmenzis in P2. Boom. By the way, is in third. But bearing in mind, we've had J. Carl Collin and Casper come in. And Matt's now out of this race. We're down to 14 drives. I'm almost certain that the incident between Max and Colin will be investigated by the stewards. Obviously, since Colin is a steward, he won't be allowed to look at his own incident, but there are other stewards at One Half Racing that will look into that. So, yeah. So it will be judged fairly, of course, as Forza Brendan on the hards, not doing as well as expected, but bearing in mind, Timo and Carmantis will still need to pit soon. And I think around about end of lap 25, those two will probably go on to set up the soft tyres. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd strategy call here from Brendan because he was on the freshest mediums of everybody else. He could take them long. He could go into another set of mediums. Actually, no, he couldn't go into another set of mediums. He could have gone to a set of softs. But he's decided to elect for a medium, medium hard. It could work out because they are the most durable tyre, so it means he's safe till the end. He don't have to worry about tyre wear. He can just push all the way to the end. But still, it's a very, very odd strategy call where everyone else would be on, like... Timo and Carmentis, they can go into a set of softs or the mediums, and that'll be so much quicker than Brendan's, I would say, about 11 lap old hards, which will be around about 40%. So it's all going to come down to can Brendan hang on if he does jump the likes of Timo and Carmentis? this? And um, it's, it's just going to be about Brendan holding on if he does jump them.
I think you're muted again, Jess. Again, and Nicola Soro is definitely dropping like flies currently at the moment in that Haas car, and uh, we've tried to get him in, but unfortunately, he hasn't been able to get in, so I wonder if he's had a power cut or um, his wheel disconnected or something like that. CNR arm gets past Broom in the inside towards turn one. There he goes, and he's up into P3 on the road two. I wonder what strategy they're going to be thinking of. I think two sets of softs, maybe for the power of them. Trying to go defensive, go see unarmed, but boom, goes to the left-hand side and he gets past the unarmed up into third place and could be for a potential podium spot, maybe. But again, it depends on Pitters as Delta Hunter comes in into the pits for a set of the mediums. I thought he would have had a set of softs left, but I'm guessing he doesn't want to take that gamble. By the way, I hope Posh Evans... Oh, yeah, he had to put early, didn't he? Because uh, he had a uh, front wing damage. So, yeah, he's, he's done one stop already. He's going to try and stretch those to the soft until the end. For Paul Shevers, he's going to hope for a safety car. Yeah, you would think he would hope he'd be hoping for a safety car right now. It was unlucky uh, that it was caught up within an incident within the first few laps. So, unfortunate there for him. I mean, it's what happens in racing. These, these things happen. You get caught up in a... Incident which necessarily wasn't your fault is unarmed gets back past boom pie because boom pie does come into the pit lane now You would assume I would say a set of mediums at this point in the race softs could be a still a good strategy call But I will fall off quite quickly although I hit the cliff around about soft. lap 20 29 it is softs for boom pie He can use them very very effectively Colin and Casper are uh, uh, are all battling J Cole to the outside of Casper heading through turn three What is this going to be down the down the straight into turn four. Neither have too much ERS for themselves, respectively, as they head down into turn four. J. Cole trying to hold it around the outside, but Casper manages to get by, obviously, with a three-second time penalty low, does Casper. So uh, he will fall down a few places if he isn't able to break away. Uh, fatality with another three-second time penalty, but now it's really just when T. Ramon Carmenta this come into the pit lane, how far behind will they be from Brendan? And what tyre do they go on to? As mm. I say, that car mentalist is in. It's like car mentalist can read your mind, uh, Steve, uh, for him going in. And he's going on the... I see some red tyres. I see some red tyres. Now, I think since quite a lot of people don't have some used soft tyres left, they probably would have waited until this point to come in because otherwise those tyres won't get to the end. We have seen the drop-off quite early, but for some drivers, they would compromise the drop-off if the drivers are going to be on a similar strategy. So Carmenta is still going to come out in a decent position, but he's got traffic as well, which is not ideal. Through goes Colin, through goes Casper, and surely something must do something about that, but Car uh, Carmenta has to be forced to be with this traffic for quite a long time. And I think that is almighty mighty bad for him to be stuck in that traffic you want to be in as clear air as you possibly can but he now has to work for it yeah you would think that now it lets Timo know that he has to come in shortly so it'll either be this lap or the next <coughs> he will come into the pit lane or he will be in that train with the likes of Carmentalist and Casper because they are gaining of course they are on the fresher medium tyres of course they've done their second stop in this race and this is the battle for P3 at the moment, maybe even P2, uh, depending on how long Timo stays out for. So, Carmentis needs to use those soft tyres effectively. He needs to use his DRS so now. To the inside, he goes to Colin. You think he'll get the move done before the braking zone, even before the start-finish line, he gets the move done. But he will be under a bit of pressure heading in to turn four from Colin behind. But Carmentis on those softs will get better traction out of turn two. But Colin is still with him. Colin is still with him as they head down to turn four now, but just not going to be close enough to make the move. Carmenta this now needs to use this clean air effectively. Try to gain on Timo in front. Brendan is bringing that gap down to Timo as well. It's now 16.2, so you would expect Timo to come out around about four seconds behind. So it's just going to be Carmenta this needs to use this clean air now, get in front of Timo, and Timo needs to make sure he doesn't come out in that traffic that Carmenta this was in. Yeah, because otherwise, more time could be lost between these guys as well. And here comes Timo then into the pits. This could be for the race win. The pit stop is going to be crucial because the softs gain a delta of around about 
three or four attempts per lap, which is not huge. But when it's pit stops involved, it's going to be a much bigger difference. So hopefully it's a cleaner pit stop. Looks clean to me and very tidy from the AlphaTauri team. So Timo comes out of the pit lane. Brendan comes out as well. I believe that's uh, Brendan's, well, um, first stop. And he's still got to make one more. And that means it's Timo versus Carmesa. And they're all within the same amount of track. This is amazing. So I'll get the stops for you, just in case any of you are jeffing. Everyone's made two stops. Everyone has done it two stops apart from Vitality and Posh Evans. So we've got pretty much five cars on for a shot of the win. It's going to be even harder to choose from the day. Casper's come from low down, by the way, to be in fifth spot. J. Cole had an almighty comeback as well. Oh, this is going to be just uh, so tricky. But on the other hand, it makes it for a very exciting race to have, I think, three or four cars in the fight for this one. Yeah, you would think as well, with Brendan on those hards, he'll sort of be the cork in the bottle when the likes of Timo and Carmentis catch up in this one and it will back, uh, back up the field so much that even maybe Boompai and uh, uh, Unarmed could come into this one. And we could have an eight-way battle for the lead heading on to the final few laps. Casper getting closer to Colin. Colin's dropped a second back from Carmentalist. We're just going to have to keep an eye on that gap between Brendan and Timo. If it hap if Brent, uh, Timo catches up through turn four on Brendan, he's then going to have to wait the whole middle sector as Casper to the inside of Colin. Now, he moves up into P4, but obviously that time penalty will not be helping his cause as it stands. As Colin back down the inside into turn six, Casper leaves him a lovely amount of car uh, of racing room as he heads to the inside now, That's does Colin. Through turn J. Cole trying to capitalise on these two squad, but it's a bit of contact from wing to front right. J. Cole, though, manages to save the car, but now we turn our attention to Timo and Brendan. 1.1 seconds is the gap as we're about to head on to lap 30 of 36. Yes, Timo, I think, is the class of the field at the moment in between these soft runners and with car mentalists dropping back a little bit. It could come down to the top two for the race win. But the battle of the podium is going to get even more insane. So grab your popcorn. We've still got seven laps to decide who is going to be winning this Sao Paulo Grand Prix. One home racing season 23. As uh, we've got, I think, Timo to the inside of Forks of Brendan. And he gets into P1. Apparently, um, something blocked uh, Niccolo from coming in at the moment. But... Unfortunately, says uh, there's there, people have done their two stops. We can't seem to invite him, and I don't have him as a friend. But meanwhile, Colin to the inside, in towards turn five and six. Can he hold his line? Yes, he does. J. Cole is in this well, looking to take advantage. C. Unarmed also in this too, to the outside, through in towards turn number seven. Some very twisty parts of the race circuit. And if you get a foot wrong, that's going to be very difficult. But C. Unarmed doing a great job to go ahead of J. Cole. Then this is absolutely insane racing i have to say one of the best p1 races of the season boom is in here at this as well so j cole's mediums is starting to struggle a little bit that's what we saw with nicolo soro earlier on in this race and we're starting to see timo 2.3 seconds now ahead of forks of brendan but look at this midfield fight casper colin can armed boom pie they're all winning a shot oh, no no Colin's at a moment and he's down into eight he was going to be one of my drivers of the days as well but unfortunately he's lost it he said in his uh, pre-race interviews that you always get unlucky that is an unlucky moment that is just that is just sad for the Mercedes driver that is super super disappointing for Colin there he locked the rears heading into turn one sent the car into a half spin luckily collected uh, uh, unarmed, but, uh, uh, but it was only the rear tyre, so unarmed is okay. He can still carry on. He's not got a puncher or anything, so he's still racing around the track, and I mean, luckily for him, it wasn't collected at the front end of the car, because that could have been a late race safety car if there was a big crash and both of them retired at that part of the circuit, uh, but unarmed manages to carry on. He's now up into fourth place. Carmenta is now catching up to Brendan. Brendan could fall down to third place here. But Timo 
his tyres will hang on. But if they hit the cliff at around about lap 34, and Brendan, yes, he is on a bit of older mediums, as here comes Carmentinus to his inside. Now he gets the move done before they get into turn four. But Brendan could still at least get second place here by the time the soft tyre drops off. Yeah, so Brendan with the more doable tyre, it's still not over for him. This is what I like, the strategy game as well. But anyway, let us know in the chat who do you think is going to be getting on the podium. We know who's going to potentially get the win because Timo's just pulling off that massive gap to everyone in the rest of the field. But let's just look, by the way, at positions gained. Everyone's done their two starts apart from Bosch Evans, so we've got to keep an eye on that. But Casper's gained the most out of the top uh, the, the, of J. Cole and himself. Boom Pie has gained 10 places so far. He is having a race of his life at the moment. C. Unarmed, also in the race of his life as well, has gained five places. So Boom Pie, C. Unarmed and Casper gained the most places this race, with J. Cole also gaining five. Biggest loser, by the way, at the one still in this race is Porsche Evans, who's dropped down six places so far. We don't have that long to go to the end of this race. Four laps to go until the end of the Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Timo that leads, Carmenza is second, and Brendan in third, and C unarmed in fourth spot. And it looks like Timo could get the lead of the championship. Yeah, Timo, it, it just all, it's all gone his way today. I mean, Nicolo Soro's disconnect. Unfortunate for Nicolo Soro, but Timo would be thanking his lucky stars that it happened, really. I mean, Probably he's probably disappointed there wasn't a battle for the win, and um, at the moment he's still uh, 4.8 seconds clear. And if it's mistake free, he's probably going to extend that gap over Carmentis due to the tire tire wear difference. We still have a battle for P4, an armed versus Boom Pie. Still have the battle for second yes. place between Brendan and Carmenta this. So we're, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens over these next three laps because Brendan can still get Carmenta this here. He's still within the DRS. He's gaining down this main straight. He's gaining about. He's going to be within about four tenths as they exit turn two. And Brendan, this is going to go all the way down to the wire here between these two drivers. Bumpai down the inside of Unarmed. He gets the move done, and he's up to fourth place. From last to fourth, ladies and gentlemen, and he's on a charge. And looks like um, C Unarmed is looking like to get past him again. And uh, he's doing a great job to keep his car on the road. He almost uh, defended from CNR, but I thought he couldn't do so. But the fact that Bumpai hasn't scored many points this season and the fact that he's looking like he's going to be gaining more points combined. He's got zero points, actually. So Bumpai could be on for his first points in one home racing, which I have to say will be huge. The only other drivers to not get a point this season is Konzo. He's not here tonight. And Posh Evans. Posh Evans luckily goes into the pits for his final stop. Maybe saving it until a little bit late so he could just try and go for the fastest lap point. Which I think is safe because I think that's his only chance of game points in this race. And I wonder if other drivers will probably be doing that a little bit further back. Maybe play Tality, perhaps. Or maybe he just wants to get the point anyway. But boom. Final penultimate lap for Boom for a chance to get P4 in this race. Casper with that three second time penalty. And Brendan looking like he's got the tyres to potentially take P2 away from Carmentalist. This is like many other leagues where we see them battling again. This is probably the start of this in one half racing, which is great to see. Yeah, it really is. As well, that's the yellow flag. That's for Delta Hunter. He has spun round on the exit of turn one. Um, obviously, it looks like he might have had contact with Lukey. They'll go side by side there into the first corner. Brent, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Unarmed and Bumpai, they're still battling over fourth place. Brendan, of course, getting closer and closer to Carmentalis as they head through turn 12 for the penultimate time now through John Sal. So it's going to be close between these guys. Of course, Carmentalis doesn't have much uh, much battery to use compared to Brendan, who does. He could use the DRS zone perfectly here to gain 
ever so slightly to about three tenths of a second if he uses a bit of his battery and then try and make a move heading into turn four this time around. So through turn one they go. Carmenta this of course leading from Brendan in second. So these two battling over third. Boompire gets uh, down the inside of an arms but what's happening between the second and third? Here comes Brendan to the outside. Is he going to get the move done? Yes he is before the breaking zone. I think a little nudge as well by Carmenta this. But Brendan gets to position. What about an arms? Is he be able to get past Boompire? No, he is not. But still, they've got the run up to the start finish line. Oh, and Carmentalis is gone. Carmentalis has gone off the road. He oh, dropped no. the rear end. Heading into si turn six. He slid all the way off the circuit. And has any chance of second place. Gone and down the drain. It's going to be between Boompire and unarmed heading through turn eight and up into nine and ten it's going to be between these two over p4 they've still got to run up to the line to do talking about the run up to the line it's going to be timo he's had a bit of luck today but it doesn't matter he's played the strategy perfectly timo wins your erd brazilian grand prix brendan will get second comment to this third but what about uh, unarmed and Bumpire heading with DRS down the main straight. It's going to be oh so close as they come to the line. Look how close he is. Oh, by 72 thousandths of a second, Bumpire is able to hold on and get P4. J. Cole uh, manages to get past Casper with his penalty. And wow, what a race. I'm sorry, but I've already configured my driver of the day right here and there. Um, but I will say it in just a minute after starting last. But talk about a great race. I mean, even though we've had 15 drivers, it did not disappoint. So fair play. Carmenta has got very unlucky at the end. He was doing brilliantly to fight with Brendan, but maybe the pressure got to him or maybe the tyres were getting to them as well. Boomer gets the in-game driver of the day, but we will uh, let you know our, our choices for driver of the day in just a minute. So, we'll go for your order. And Timo, the Dutchman, well, Max Verstappen won at the Dutch Grand Prix earlier. But we've got another Dutchman that wins today. And Championship League will go to him. And we've got a week break next week. So, he's got a lot of time to think about the remaining race of the season, what he could do to extend his championship lead further. So let's go through your results then. Timo wins from Brendan in second. Unlucky from Carmentalis to miss out on second place, but still a really nice podium for him. Boom, gets fourth place from last on the grid. His first point in one half racing could have been a podium, but he doesn't care. Well done to him. Sian Armed in fifth, J. Cole in sixth, Casper in seventh. We got Colin Larkin, Lukey, Delta Hunter, Fatality, Nicholas Oro, Posh Evans, and then Matt. Matt, your only DNF in this race with Posh Evans and Nicholas Oro being one lap down. And Nicholas Oro, we tried to get him in, but unfortunately, he couldn't go in. So that will mark as a disconnect, unfortunately. But, uh, well, we have to go for our drivers of the day. Quite a tough one. One, I think two obvious choices, but I'll, I'll see who you potentially picked very, very soon. So, Steve, who would you go your driver of the day? Because I went first last week. And what would you like to ask him? Um, I'm going to go for Bumpai. And I'll, I'll ask him, um, was you expecting this result from, from today and after, after your qualifying session? Yep. I think Bumpai definitely a contender for driver of the day there. And I'll have to get, get get it to Timo, our race winner. So my question for Timo is a bit of a bittersweet moment once again for you, but you you played that strategy perfectly. How much confidence does it give you for the next few races of the season? And those are our two Driver of the Day nominees. You can vote when the poll goes out on Twitter tomorrow. Now, I've just found out, by the way, Steve, that Carmentis has been driving with no false feedback since the first pit stop. How oh. on earth did he keep out, up with a lot of people without that? So that's probably why he lost it at the end. But... Could be. I think he might have touched the grass on the outside. Of course, no false feedback. You don't know. You touched it. So exactly. he, he might have dropped it that way. But fair, fair play to Carmentis there to still get third with even no false feedback. Maybe he should teach me on how to do that, but uh, there we go. So uh, thank you to everyone who's watching, if you've been watching it live or post-event. We really do appreciate your presence. 
Final um, mention to our sponsors before we say our final thoughts. Next Level Racing that are sponsoring the league by providing an ES1 Sim racing seat to a potential driver's champion of each tier. They'll be in the running for it and there will be a wheel. It's worth £699 plus £449. You do the maths. And there's lots of other prizes as well. Aztec Sport, Sim Sports sponsor the league by providing a set of Invicta Sim racing boots to the driver with the shortest combined qualifying time. Our sponsors, Pure Sim Gear, sponsors the league to uh, are winning a pair of sim racing gloves to the drive with the most fastest laps and poles combined. Mystery Shirt Box, they are providing a mystery shirt box to the winner of 100 racing driver rankings. Our partners, Vespertine, partner the league by providing merch and sponsoring our championship prizes. ERT, they're partnering the league by sponsoring our trophies and also partnering the ERT going against Tough Awards. And Simgrid, who are providing a great community for us and they do the standings for us and everything. So thank you very much to them. So that is the end of the Brazilian Grand Prix. We're in a week's break, so the drivers will have a chance to stretch their legs. Same with us, actually. But next week, we head to the Japanese Grand Prix in Suzuka. Quite a technical track. We could see potentially some drivers may think about doing their engine penalties there because realistically i think if my math is correct they can take their engine until the end of the season if they if they take their engine penalty from japan could you see engine penalties from here um yeah i, I would assume some will take it around japan of course um yeah it's hard to overtake but then you get it out the way and you know you can take your engine all the way to the end of the end of the season so it, it could be some drivers, maybe the quicker drivers like Timo, Nicolo Soro taking the penalty there, um, and then maybe um, some further down the line. But we're just going to have to wait and see what the drivers decide to do. I can see quite a lot of people, by the way, taking their penalties at Las Vegas um, on the 17th of the week after. So, uh, yeah. So I think we could see in the next couple of weeks a lot of people taking their engine penalties anyway. But with the amount of races per season and with the amount of laps per engine, who knows who's going to take their penalty when. But that is it then for one hour racing. Thank you to guys, for the guys, those of you for watching. We'll be back in just under 14 days' time for the, sixth, the fifth round of one hour racing season 23 for the Japanese Grand Prix at 8 p.m. UK time. Enjoy your week off, everybody, whether you're watching, racing, or commentating. For myself and Steve, have a good evening. And bye-bye.